Hello and welcome back. This is episode nine of the Crick House. We cannot believe it. Episode nine, obviously not counting our three minute testimony series. Episode nine of the Crick House. So if you have been joining us for the last a little series that we've been doing called the blog posts, we have been walking through our personal family blog, which documents uh, our lives in ministry and all the the highs and lows and the crazy stories um, since the beginning of 2019. And we are about to come up to a story that we have hinted at for a very, very long time. Um, We might have referred to it as the bus or Big Yellow. You're about to hear what that actually is and what that is all about. And that's going to take us a couple of weeks to go through. So you're in for one massive ride. And if you have already heard about this story before, you are still in for one massive ride. And a really exciting thing that we've got in the works right now is we're actually creating a documentary film about this. So it's going to be about a a 45-minute, half-an-hour documentary coming out in the coming months with original videos, clips and photos from this time in our life as a family. So as you listen to the the coming weeks and episodes of this story, you will understand how exciting that documentary is going to be. So keep an eye out on our YouTube channels. But without further ado, let's have a big hello from everybody at the dining table. And today we do have a full quota. We have everybody here. You've missed me, I know you have. And the three dogs. And the three dogs are here, absolutely. Trying to get past your chair, Gary. Flint is trying past to get past the chair. Past squeaky chair. Oh, hello, Pip's joined us. And Pip is now at the table. <laughs> Flynn wants to get past the squeaky chair into the kitchen, so we'll just let him do that. Welcome to a very organic uh, being time a dog, he's just at, the, <laughs> at the dining the table. table. So, episode nine. Mother, okay. what's it about? So, it starts off in May 2019. When we had a, well, actually, no, it's a little bit before then. May 2019 is when Big Yellow actually came across from America. That's right. On a, what did she come across on? A raft. A freight ship. A freight ship. A raft. Yeah, she was airlifted here. Can you imagine a Google Earth picture you could get on a freight ship with Big Yellow on it? So we, when we're talking about Big Yellow, we're talking about a American school bus. Yes, the ones that you see in the films. A real one. Where the young people and children get on this bus and go to school. And we had a crazy idea at some point in... Well, the, hang on, hang on. Let's backtrack. The idea so, so we, we? Is, is that a, no, no, no. A, we all had an idea that we needed a vehicle uh, okay, okay. large enough to travel the ministry, as in the props, the staging, the costumes, anything like that, and our family, and enable us to be able to sleep in it overnight or whoever we took with us so that we wouldn't have lots of costs with overnight accommodation, correct? And the first idea we had was a library bus or a double deck, you know, a British bus, a bus you could already get in the UK. All good ideas. All brilliant ideas. And then we made a mistake of letting mum... Well, not the mistake, it's really... It's not we, true. It's not, <laughs> this is not then true. Then mum went loose on eBay. She did. And yeah, but when she we, saw... No, no, I didn't see anything. Well, you see, this is wrong. Here, this is wrong. wrong. We didn't see anything. I saw a black double decker bus, right. and then which was saw... converted. I didn't see anything. This is not the <laughs> truth. We went down. That's the cake. Do you please want to go in the kitchen and turn the oven turn off? The cake time um, off? We went down to a place just outside Guildford called Shred and Butter. No, right. called Shred and Butter. If you don't know what I'm talking about, which you probably don't, but if you don't know them, Jesus. look them up. They are an amazing company that make amazing conversions on buses and strange vehicles. So we went along to see this black double-decker bus. Now, Jim, the owner of this yard and Shred and Butter, he took us across to see this black double-decker bus and we walked in and he'd just done it amazingly. Wood and it was just stylish inside. But behind this big black double-decker bus was a big fat yellow Banana. Yes, there was. Yeah, there, was also, there was always a little, a little red one. Or a little red one. And his red American school bus. Big red one. And Gary and I went, oh my word, that is so cool. And he said, come and have a look. And that was it. We were kind of sold that we didn't actually need a black double-decker bus. We need it. <laughs> An American school bus. A big yellow American school bus. And then for the next four or five months, I think our household spent most evenings looking at YouTube clips about how to do a yellow American school bus conversion. Yes, we did. Um, we thought the space in this thing was fantastic. How big was the one that we looked at, Gary? Well, how big is the one we got? Well, the one we've got is um, about 28 foot long. Okay, what's that in metres? Nine metres, about nine metres by three metres, I think. 
Um, anyway, long story, but we decided we'd go on a fundraiser for Big Yellow. And the idea was that Big Yellow would become this missions vehicle, but also have the opportunity and ability to have a cinema screen put on the outside so that she could go to events and do outdoor cinema. Um, because as a family, we'd been doing some cinema into the community of some of the good films like Courageous, Fireproof. Um, Facing the Giants. All of those Flywheel. ones by the Kendrick brothers. And we'd been doing them in our community. So the idea was she would be multi-purpose. And so we went on a big fundraiser to try and raise money to buy a big yellow. And we spoke to a company in America who had, you know, they they take all of them out of service and then they sell them on. And they were very good to us and gave mm. us a good price for a good vehicle. An international bluebird. And we went on this fundraiser and we eventually made the target, right? Yes, mm -hmm. we did, yeah. So May 2019, I have put in our blog, a sailor went to sea to see what he could see, but he didn't expect to see a big American school bus. Oh, you should have written, but he didn't expect to see a big American schoolie. Oh, it would well, have yeah, better. well, there you go. Uh, a school is a nickname for school buses that are being converted. That's called schoolies. We have purchased some camera gear so we can document our bus build and then our adventures in the bus. <laughs> I've just remembered what we've managed to label as camera gear. Okay. A DJI Osmo Mobile 2. <laughs> well, and for anyone go. with any tech savvy, you know, that's not really camera gear. But and... that, there it was. There we go. I put here, it's accelerating one encounter is never the same as the next. God does new things daily in our lives and others and new exciting projects begin mm. to think that if you had called us missionaries a couple of years ago, we may have chuckled at the thought, but now it's real. We are a missionary family. 2019 so far has been great. It's had its downers, but the good God has done far above ever what we could ask, think, or imagine. Absolutely. So we had this big yellow school bus come across in 2019. And if we flick through a few more blogs of just different ministry trips and things like that, we have here in June 2019 that we got to meet Big Yellow for yes. the first time. Oh, yeah. Yes, we did, because in the end, at the end of May, we went to Big Christian Conference. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Grace and Faith. Grace and Faith, absolutely. Or um, Grace and, and Faith. And it arrived whilst we were there, didn't it? It did you know? arrive. It arrived in Southampton while we were there, and we were really disappointed we couldn't go down to the docks to see her. That's right, because we wanted to bring it to um, the conference with us, didn't we? We did. And something we've forgotten <laughs> to do, just before we continue on, so hold that thought, everybody, about meeting the bus for the first time. We forgot to give Oscar his word for the Ooh. song. So, Oscar, your word has come from a listener called Tilda. Okay, you know her. Um, she has given you the word chicken. No, platypus. Platypus. She's given you the word platypus. It was both. both. It was both. So, a, so a platypus chicken. Oh, yeah, I'll pick platypus. Okay. Platypus. Okay. Okay, okay Oscar. Right, there we go. Oscar will sing us a song about a platypus at the end of this. But back to it. The first time we met Big Yellow was after Grace and Faith. First time we met Big Yellow, he was, she was, she was in Jim's, Jim's yard she. and we came across to see her and Jim said to us, I cannot believe this. It looks as though it has just come out of the paint shop. Yes. Jim was jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> now, Jim gets lots of buses um, for lots of different people and seriously this bus looked like somebody had spent the whole entire time of it coming over from the US polishing its bonnet right it was gleaming it was just so I'm looking at the photograph in our blog now and she really is looking like somebody's waxed her absolutely big yellow big yellow big orange <laughs> Well, I think the picture's not doing her justice, actually. Anyway, she came across and Jim was just amazed at the enormity of the quality of this vehicle. But at this present time in Manor, we were doing an anti-bullying project with an anti-bullying musical. And we went to see this bus and we walked down the side of the bus. And if you like, the kiss from God mm. was the fact that in the window of the bus was a big hexagonal sticker that said, Bullying stops here. <laughs> and we just uh -huh. all oh absolutely God. laughed in the window as we saw this. One of the young people from the ministry, seeing the sticker there, said, oh, I thought you put it there. I returned with, no, but Jesus did. Mm. We felt really overwhelmed and grateful to God for his goodness and love and his tender and confirming hand that shows his plans are precious and purposed before we even knew it. 
All we had to do was be willing and obedient. And I think the other thing which really struck us was as soon as we had this big yellow bus in the yard, um, God started to bring back some words that had been spoken over us three years ago. Now, we partnered with Heidi Baker, fantastic ministry for a very Mm. long time. And you guys wrote a song for her, Iris Ministries. And um, as a ministry, we would partner with her. And we went to see Heidi in Bath with our dear friends Lelette and um, Melody. And Eliana, and it was the day before my birthday, I remember. It being, was the day before Being in the car yes. because we were coming home late yes. and it turned midnight and they all started singing happy birthday to me at the garage, I remember that. Uh-huh. <laughs> a long drive home, I remember that one. We went to see Heidi um, in Bath at a meeting and afterwards, true Heidi Baker fashion, she took us back to the side of the stage in a little corridor and she said, let's sit. And we sat on the floor, cross-legged, you know, no airs and graces, no big... Chairs needed, no conference tables. There she was, having just ministered to hundreds of people in Bath, sitting on the floor, leaning back against the wall, in the dirt, as she normally is, you know, down with the people. And we were sitting there opposite her. And she gave us lots of prophetic words and lots of things God was saying to her. But one of the things that she said, which suddenly came back to us as we saw Big Yellow, she said, people will stop at traffic lights and see you and say... There goes the miracle family. Absolutely. Now, we'd never really understood what that meant. You know, why would people stop at traffic lights and recognize us? Because we certainly weren't going to be that famous that that people would recognize our family through a a car window. No. But we just suddenly dawned on us that if we're stuck in a big yellow (laughs) American banana at a traffic light and that bus is... It's linked. Not, it's not um, subtle. It's no. Bastard, but mad stuff, isn't it? That bus is linked to the ministry, and the ministry has miracles popping. Amen. Then they are going to stop and stare and say, "There goes the miracle family." Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And people tend to not stop. They're driving past with their phones out the window, trying to get a selfie as they're driving past, particularly on the motorway. <laughs> you see them trying to do it sneakily. They don't want to be seen. And yet you see this hand come out of the window with a phone, hold it up, turn it towards us, and then it slipped back in again quietly and the car will just speed off. (laughs) (laughs) I remember the first day that we went down with a couple of our dear friends, Loxley and Paulette, Mm. and I've got a picture here that I'm looking at of all of us putting our hands on the bonnet. And just as, you know, people are commissioned into the ministry and sent forth to do missions trips or, you know, ordained and things like this, we laid hands on this vehicle that we knew God had given us and we commissioned this bus to be used by God for whatever he needed it to be used for. Little did we know. Little did we know. One year later. But we'll get to that another time. (laughs) Little did we know that this bus was about to be used by God in Mm. a massive, massive way. And so for June and July, do you remember, guys, we oh, I remember. ripped out I have some photos from those days. seats. And what did you and Josh do? We did, we did, so we did many things. Um, my friend, uh, hang on, let me tell you. My friend Josh, I call him my fourth brother because we grew up together and he is practically like another brother to me. Um, but he and his dad helped us rip out the seats in the bus and um, clean it all up and renovate the inside and stuff. But we did um, big yellow chair surfing, whereas by we would clean the top of the inside of the bus, so like the white roof on the inside, while surfing along the seats. And we found a Spanish dime, an American nickel, a bunch of chewing gum. I hope you didn't eat it. No, that's disgusting. But I've still got the I've still got the coins. I've still got the coins from the original rip out of Big Yellow. I remember it being one of the most ridiculously hot days that we've ever had in Surrey. And we were baking and Michael was there. Michael was there helping mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, Jackie's husband. Yeah, Jackie's Matt. husband, Matt, Matt, Matt was there. Um, yeah, some of our lovely Dwayne, Surrey friends, Dwayne, Dwayne was there. which is Josh's dad, yeah. uh, Andrew, Abigail, Tim, John, yeah, Abigail. Yeah, right. oh my goodness, we had quite a bunch of people helping us. It was like 31, 32 Celsius. It was. Uh, but that's outside. <laughs> when you are in a tin can full of glass windows <laughs> with a generator outside, power tools such as angle grinders and sanders and drills inside this metal tube. It's not only 32 Celsius, but the humidity is ridiculous. It was incredibly hot. I remember at the end of the day, Dwayne taking us away and saying, come on, guys, because I had Eli then who would have been, I can't even calculate how old we would have been then, six, 
Oh. Maybe just six. Um, I mean, yeah. Five yeah. or six coming five, up six. Five. Yeah, five, um, five. And you were sweating like a little piglet. <laughs> and he took us back to his house and he and Lynn looked after us. We I remember we slept the night. We had a beautiful cooked breakfast in the morning oh, in the sunshine. Amazing. Do you I remember? Stay up midnight playing pool in the garden house. So I actually have on my camera roll a photo of the bacon and egg roll. You do? That was made for me that morning. You do? I do, and I still have that photo. I remember having a conversation with Josh about how many Weetabixes he has or had. Oh, it was like 12 in the morning. I don't think he still does it because he's tall enough. Um, But I think he had like 12 to 14 every morning. That was just another example. A few weeks ago, we were talking about practical love and just supporting each other. And although this wasn't, you know, their bus, um, you know, their their children were all involved in Manor at the time. But Mm. they were true friends, true family in Jesus, still are, um, that are, you know, we're just prepared to get down and help and, you know, be very practically loving to help Mm. a mission get off the ground. Absolutely. You know, and we were talking about that a few weeks ago. I mean, how many other crazy things can we think of as we're talking now that people in the past that we've known or people from the word that have been asked by God to do things that on the face of it looked a bit crazy, looked a bit weird, um, you know, and yet they obeyed God and what importance that obedience led to. So we have an amazing friend called Rachel, Rachel. and um, she came to our house, do you remember? And she dropped off um, some groceries and toilet roll. You're going to have to remind uh, me of the story. Yeah. yeah. So in Nuneaton, when we were living in Nuneaton, uh, we had a shopping delivery come on. I think it was the first day we'd moved in um, or maybe the next de- next week when we moved in to this rented house. And the shopping was quite sporadic and we were getting used to the area. This was just after COVID. Had ended yeah, as well, it was. Wasn't it? So, so there were still lots of things that were missing from um, shopping sort of deliveries. That's and right. there were several items. I think toilet rolls were one, some pasta was another, yes. some gluten-free <laughs> pasta was another and then just something else i can't remember what it was i have a photo flower somewhere. possibly um anyway rachel turned up on our doorstep and she just gave us a bag and she said oh, i don't know what it was she says kind of leaving um house this morning and i felt god say i needed to go and buy the correct toilet rolls and she said how embarrassing is that going to be just turning up on their doorstep and saying, sorry, I don't know why God asked me to buy you toilet rolls. But little did she know that just a few days before our shopping delivery hadn't got any and we couldn't find any. So just for the viewers clarification, you have just said that the shopping has come a couple of days before. Rachel came <laughs> and they hadn't brought any toilet roll. You so want me what, to clarify what, what, did, what, we what did we do for those Twigs couple of leaves, days, Mum, when we didn't leaves. have toilet roll? <laughs> no, we used baby wipes, anything that was cotton, anything that was throwaway. Oh, okay, no, <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, another time with the same Rachel. Um, More toilet roll? No. Oh. This Rachel is like an amazing artist. She did a lot of the stuff on the side of our bus and stuff. But I always found this was like really amazing because. When still after Nuneaton, wasn't too long after this. Um, so I do watercolors and painting, and I had recently been saying to mum, Oh, I need to like get one of those like lap easels or something so I can do it easily when traveling and stuff. Not even a week after I'd said that, just to mum, no one else, just to mum, ends up, um, and bearing in mind, only mum's heard me say that I wanted to start doing this or trying this. Rachel turns up with a bunch of art stuff because she's they're moving house and then she's having a clearing out and she comes with these like two big plastic boxes full of art supplies and on the very top she actually had been to like a car boots and she'd found this there and she'd brought it along with us along with her to see if we could use it was a lap easel yeah not a week after i'd said to mum like i really want to start trying one of these for traveling rachel turns up with one I think it's those little things, you know, when God tells you to do something or you feel impressed to do something and you think this is strange toilet rolls, a lap easel, you know, this is a strange request and and it's the obedience. There is that scripture that says be willing and obedient and you will eat Mm. the good fruit of the land. So, you know, it's not just being willing for God to use us, but when he does or asks us to do things, being obedient, no matter how crazy or weird that might seem, like us buying a big American school bus. I mean, we could have bought any, any vehicle. Where is the scripture, Ari? 
Huh? Willing and obedient. Oh, I was looking at a different one. Oh, okay. Right okay. Um, and also thinking about the stories of the Bible, where can we think of places where God asked people to do things that was crazy on the face of it, look crazy? I can think of one. Um, Walking on the water would yeah. be one. Yeah, asking well, Peter. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, asking yeah, that's Peter right. to come. That's right. Have you found the scripture? So the verse I just flashed at you. It turns out it was the same verse you'd quoted, just in a different translation. Okay, what is that verse? This one's in the NLT. If you will only obey me, you will have plenty to eat. That's yeah. in the NLT. That's what Isaac about in the Meyer. NKGV? The NKG, uh, where's the NKGV now? You know when you have all those different versions or new versions, suddenly you're scrolling. Scrolling? Scrolling. Scrolling. There's also the obvious one in the Old Testament, the when God asked Noah to build an ark when there hadn't been rain. Yeah, that was really hard for me to do, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, here we go. This is exactly the one mom quoted. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. NLT, Isaiah one nineteen. Okay, so it's not just about being willing. It's about being obedient. We can say to God, yes, God, use me. Yes, God, I'm willing. Yes, God, bring people around my path today. God, Holy Spirit, remind me of people that I need to talk to, I need to bless. Tell me what I need to do with this month's check and everything else. But mm. what are you going to do when God comes knocking on your heart and says, okay, 50% of your check this month, I want you to give to the so-and-so family down the road or 50% oh, of what I have just given you with your big inheritance I want you to give away. Can you imagine if God told Noah to build an ark and he sat there for however many years he lived and was willing? But He's fulfilled obedient. half not the obedient. commandment, but, but not obedient. obedient. Yeah. He would have died in the flood too. doesn't matter how willing you are. You have to be obedient. You have to be obedient too. Right. But also, to flip that around, you can be obedient and not willing, mm. which is another thing, isn't it? Mm. And to be, a, yeah, exactly. It's a heart attitude to be willing, um, but not obedient, and then to be obedient, but 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 not willing. You know, it says in the Bible that God loves a cheerful giver. You know, so if you are obedient but have a stinking attitude, you're only fulfilling half the commandment because He wants you to be willing as well. You know, He He, he you He wants you to find pleasure. You know, in doing the things that He asks you to do. And they might not be as dramatic as building an ark, prayerfully not. They may be as simple as go to the shop and get some toilet rolls. Um, they may be as simple as that £10 that you thought you had in your wallet for something, you know, give that away. You know, it's just being open and yielded to the Holy Spirit and in that point being willing and obedient because when we are willing and obedient, sometimes we don't know why at the moment. You know, at that moment, did Noah know why he was building an ark? Did he know why everyone was mocking him? Or he knew that he had a word from God? Did we know why God asked us to buy Big Yellow at that moment? Why it felt so impressed on our hearts to do that? Mm. Well, no, at the moment, at that moment, we didn't. And we brought Big Yellow back and eventually we brought her up to the West Midlands where we were now based. And it was crazy because this cottage park cottage that noah didn't want to get out the car to see we if, if you haven't heard that you need to listen to an earlier episode <laughs> i think it's called uh, moving north okay we didn't know at the time when we said yes to park cottage that we actually would make friends with the gentleman opposite in the area we were in and he had a yard right next to his house that was empty mm -hmm, and this mm -hmm. yard was ample room for us to store big yellow in and he was kind enough to let us put our big american school bus in it yes. so god had already gone ahead and provided that and we didn't know our obedience to come north to that house was actually lined up with a plan for big yellow which was crazy but anyway the biggest thing that we can say looking back now why god said buy big yellow and buy her now is this we had this big yellow school bus outside our house and we were renting a house and then one thing or another happened and unfortunately we lost the house and due to some mice infestation, which wasn't very nice. Nope. <laughs> um, and at that moment, we didn't have anywhere else to go. And this big yellow bus was at the end of our driveway. So we were sleeping in this bus um, on some beds that Gary had built mm. with some wood and stuff to make some bunks. And we had, had a basic double and some bunk beds. And it was kind of like a means to an end for a little while. And we managed to secure another house, which was only supposed to be a short term thing. Yeah. And we were in this house um in the west midlands and <laughs> unfortunately the house had some other problems oh, and we word. needed to move out of that house and we didn't realize that at that time the word that god had started to speak to me about was 
to make a sound. And I said to God, why do we need to make a sound? We do theatre, you know, we perform, people can see, what have you. And yet this word just kept coming, make a sound, make a sound. So I was like, okay, I wrote it down. And I believe that we were supposed to start doing audio dramas and things like that. Mm. And you can see them mm. on YouTube. Yes, you can. However, little did we know that when we had to leave this house, Gary said to us, let's just get into Big Yellow. She was a work in progress, right? She yes, had a she couple was. of bunk beds. She had a small kitchenette put in by Ren Kitchens. And then she had some travel seats. That's right. And we thought, or you thought, Yep. We would get in this bus, put our stuff into storage, and we would be on a campsite for a couple of weeks yeah. while we found another yeah. rented house in the West Midlands. Mm. But then an announcement came across the TV which said... No chance. We, <laughs> the, I, can't, I can't do the impression. Oscar can. Oscar. We Os need, we need get, an impression. Oh, the, um, we need an get impression. Getting on the mic. What happened, what happened on Mother's Day? Oh, when we were in our van, do we have what, to remember that? Our, we, we were in our bus oh my gosh. on Mother's Day, and they mm. were closing the campsites because we were in a what? Um, what was it again? Uh, oh, oh yes, a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> we were in a a pandemic lockdown. That sounded more like James. That was more James May than <laughs> Boris got, Johnson. I got the wrong accent there. Hold on. <laughs> I, think we should, I think we should do a, a <laughs> Boris Johnson accent. Dude, yes, yes. Give us your Boris Johnson. Mm. I need to get it back now. Okay. Um, yes. We are going to have to go to a a, a um a, a full country lockdown. Yes. Yes, we did. There we go. We did. We had to go to a full country lockdown. And fun fact: this Sunday is Mother's Day. Um, so it's been three years since COVID. Woo! And they said this Woo! campsite that we were staying on. We are really sorry. We're closing the site. Everybody has to leave. So we will tell you much more of this. But for the next year, that big yellow banana bus mm -hmm. became our home. It certainly as did. As six and two dogs, as God positioned us in places all around the south of England, in different areas, yes. helping, supporting, being looked after, learning to live in a bus, which at the time had no running water. Yes, no running water. Do, do you remember... For the first few weeks that we were in the bus, what our bathtub was. No, I don't want to remember. Do you want to remember? So, so this is between the two houses. So this is when we were living when we were living in the bus because of the house got infested with mice and so there were some allergies and stuff, and we just had to get out. You know, we we, could, we didn't have time period, to stay. Two three week period. I yeah, think. we we didn't have time to stay in the house because of all the allergies and the health problems it was causing. So we had to jump in the bus, didn't so we? we? Camped. As an emergency, yeah, we camped in the bus. But what was the bathtub in the bus? Would you like to tell me? No, I, I can tell you. It was a big B&Q. I can tell you where we bought it. <laughs> big B&Q storage tub that was plastic. Oh. The yeah. biggest one that they had. The best thing about it though now. was the best thing they the best thing they had, the biggest one they had. Guess what it was? It wasn't black, ladies and gentlemen. It, was it wasn't blue. It was see-through. <laughs> Skinny dipping in the bus. <laughs> so we had to make sure all the gentlemen were down one end of the bus. Not out the bus, we kicked them out. Uh, and we, or in the, they waited in the car while the we, ladies. We did, we it, did. It, it was like it was like the the holies of holies in the temple, wasn't it? Because you had you had yeah you had, you had the one section of the bus that you could sit in safely, but then if you looked down the, down to your right hand of the bus, there was this big veil that would appear across the side of the across the across the bridge of the bus, as it were, you know, and and you couldn't see through, obviously, but you knew behind that veil. Veil was someone in a BQ B see through tub. <laughs> it would have been like watching a fish in an aquarium. <laughs> and also, you have to remember that when we filled it up, because the water had just come out of a big urn, one of those church urns, it was hot. You literally you poured the water in, and the steam turned into a sauna bath. Yes, a Turkish it? sauna bath. <laughs> You couldn't see for the steam. Oh, my gosh. And it was just this tiny little tub. It was only, like, a couple <laughs> inches deep. Uh, and you could get stuck. Oh, my gosh. No, we don't even want to go there. there. No, no, no. <laughs> and our family's very tall. Um, so, yeah, it's all sitting. In okay, the so, so. All right. So, so there so, are so, more so. images let, going let, around the room. Let, Thank you. Let, let's um, so, yes, so let's, let's move down. on. What's the spiritual application? The so spiritual fun. application is be obedient when God tells you to do something, even if it's crazy, like buying a big American school yes. bus, because you might end up having to live in it with a yes. B&Q tub and a sauna. Yes. And a Swedish <laughs> a sauna going on. Yes, yes. You know, God, God knew we'd need it. Didn't he? God he knew, knew what was coming. Yeah. Nobody knew COVID was coming. He did. Oh, he knew. Yeah, he, he knew. knew. Yeah, we didn't. Knew. God knew the flood was coming. He told him to build an ark. God, 
God knew that COVID was coming. Oh, we had to buy a bus. He needed, we needed a bus. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't make it quite as well as Noah. We should have put places for the dogs to actually be in, keep yeah. safe. We um, definitely had some animals on board. We three dogs at that time, isn't it? Well, yeah. two is enough. I can remember a time when in the bus, both dogs got gastroenteritis on my birthday. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> they vomited all over my bed. Oh, my goodness. Um, some of the things we can tell you about... Oh, my my life. Just, you, you know. remember when Flynn had an ear infection? He did. Oh. And this dog had to wear a cone. And bearing in mind the bus <laughs> was only three metres wide. And you had this aisle down the middle. It would be just like, scrape, scrape. Stuck, his his head, well, his head barely everywhere. fit through the doorway. Oh, it, was, and he, it was brilliant. It was not brilliant. Where is he? So, so time. in all seriousness. So in all seriousness. Before we wrap up everything. Be willing and obedient because you never know when you're going to need a bus. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone got any more scriptures to go with that? Being willing and obedient or anything on the heart? Oh. I read, um, I was trying to find this a moment ago, 1 Kings 17. It talks about Elijah. And here we go. Uh, the Lord said to Elijah, get away from here, turn to the east and go to hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be there that you should drink from the brook, for I have commanded the ravens to feed you. And it says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, mm. which flows into the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Is it like fast food? No, it's, no, it's not like no. fast food. That's more like Deliveroo because they brought it to him. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> ravens, not eagles. But, 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 but thinking about that, yeah, where was Elijah's provision? It was where God told him to go. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So if, if you're there, facing a decision right now, you know, of, of, of any form and you're going, God, where's the provision? Where's the provision for this? Maybe. And obviously you take this back to your own prayer time and your own your own discussions with the Lord. But maybe he wants you to step out and your provision will be in that place called there where he is sending you. You know, so it just, might not just be a, a location. It could be a job it change. It could be a job change. Yeah. It could be a location change within your own town or it may be that God says, you need to go here or you need to go there. And God knows that that is where everything that you need, your friendships, your provision, your financial Absolutely. provision, right. your peace, your joy, okay. um, whatever well, it is, mm -hmm. you know, God knows that it's going to be there. I remember a personal testi testimony for me about obedience was I was sat in my second year of Bible college and it was the final day of second year and they had a special offering going around. And I can remember underneath me, I was sitting on my wallet and in my wallet, I had a £10 note, um, which was going towards my driving lessons at the time. And God sewed it to me and he said, sew that £10. And I said, no, I can't do that, God. It's from my driving lesson. And everyone knows the best thing to do is argue with God, isn't it? But anyway, it wouldn't let up. So I went and sewed this £10 note. And the day went on. We had lunch, etc., 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 etc. And then someone who I'd never spoken to before at the college came and sat next to me and said, Noah, tell me what brought you here. And I told him about my, my testimony of coming to Karis and, and what that looked like and how everything was happening. And he said, the Lord has asked me to pay for your first month's term of your third year in Karis, mm. which was amazing because that happened just a couple of hours mm. after I was obedient and sewed that £10. And I truly believe had I not sewn that £10, that provision may not have been there for that first month. <laughs> you know, so it was, a, it, was a, it was an amazing oh, testimony and it sticks female. out. It was, it was it was incredibly female for the Sorry. sneeze. I mean, it came from a female, so you know. But it was a very I can just theatre sneeze, wasn't it? A <laughs> chew. I can just say, just just on the back of what Noah's just said about the ten pound, it was this week that we um, went to church, and I felt impressed to put ten pound in the offering as it went past, over and above our, our normal tithing and stuff. Just put in that, just put in the ten pound, and I was arguing because in my heart, I was thinking, if I do that, then I won't have enough money left to buy lunch for everybody on the way home because I knew we were going to be late. But but I was obedient and I put it in. And more importantly, I was willing. I was willing and obedient and put it in. And no sooner the service finished, someone walked up to me and put £20 in my hand, replaced what I'd given in an offering and, and made it more than enough to buy lunch for everyone. It doubled. Your doubled. seed doubled, didn't it? Well, we've come to the end of our podcast now. We so have. reminder to do what God asks you to do, no matter how big. Absolutely. From a big yellow bus to how yes. small, from a toilet roll Absolutely. to a £10. Absolutely. Do fact, what the Lord's asked you to do. You know, it was pressed, impressed upon um, Oscar's heart, or was it your heart? It was one of you two. It might have been both of you. Just recently, someone was going through a tough time, 
and the Lord impressed on your heart just to bake them a cake. Mm. Not buy a bus, mm. bake them a cake. And it changed their whole day, their whole week, the whole situation for mm. them. Yeah. You know, it was such a blessing to them. Mm. But anyway, so there you have it. And yeah. Oscar, we've yeah. got to end yes. with you. Yes, with we have. the song about the platypus. Okay, Tilda, this one's for you. All right. Okay. So... The funny thing about this, actually, is that you don't really get a chance to practice it, so you just have to jump on and do it. So That's the idea. There we go. Let's have a listen, then. In Australia there's a carnivore He can swim in the water and walk on the shore With a tail like a beaver and a duck like a bill He's a really fun mammal and there's more still He can scoop up his food from the bottom of the ground And since he got no teeth he stores the food he's found In his big pouch cheeks like a hamster on a wheel And then he chows it down on his insect meal Oh, dog build platypus, dog build platypus, pot duck, pot otter, and pot beaver. What an incredibly awesome creature! Well, hey, hey, hey! There we go. There the go. platypus song by Oscar. What a treat for you all. Um, gosh. Well, there we have it. Episode nine of the Crick House. Being willing and obedient. And you got to hear the start of the journey for Big Yellow. So buckle down because the next few weeks of stories on that are going to be incredible. We still have her. Well, yeah, we do. We do still have her. She's still with us. Yes, because um, how many years old? Uh, she's four she's years, old years old now with us. She's no, four years old with us, but she's a 2003 bus. But um, anyway, you'll find out all about that in the upcoming documentary and in the weeks that go by. But thank you so, so much for listening. Honestly, we are so grateful that you are here. Ariel was looking at me like she's won the lottery, so I'm going to let her take the microphone for a second. You just said Big Yellow was like, made in 2003, yeah? Yes. Big Yellow and I share the same birthday! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh so, if you are still <laughs> coping, um, <laughs> please subscribe, um, leave us a review. We may even read it here. You know, we we just love having you with us and just having this community around us, getting to hear about 10 years in ministry and as we just share what the Lord has put on our heart as well. And Ariel has a sister. And Ariel has a sister. Finally, thank you, God. So, Big it's... yellow the bus. Yes. Yes, it's incredible. So thank you again so much for listening. We will see you again next time for our 10th episode. I mean, woo-hoo. we'll have to do something to celebrate. Yeah, we'll have to do something to celebrate. I think we should hear from Pip. What you think we, we should hear from Pip the dog? Yeah. Right, hang on, let me get him up What here. was the song that Oscar sang Pip, when we were away in the bus? Oh. The Big Yellow. Was it the toy roll song? Oh, yeah. oh, oh my goodness. Oh, All right. All right, Pip Pip's is now at the, the microphone. microphone. We'll talk about that Say hello, Pip. Hello, Pip. Beating up the mic. I'm, just getting to bark, right? I'm for wolves. Can you bark? Can you, can you bark? Are you going to bark? No. I can't see him right now, but he's sitting behind, he's no. so he's sitting behind the microphone. We'll, he we'll, says nothing. We'll just have him tap on the microphone to he let you know he's here. Now. There we go. Right. This is genuinely goodbye from everyone at the Crick House. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. See you next time. Thank you so much for listening today. We hope you enjoyed being in the Crick House with us. Did you know that as a family, we are full-time missionaries and we rely on donations from people like you to meet our daily living costs? If you would like to support this podcast and our family by giving a one-time or monthly gift, please visit our website at www.manatheatrecompany.uk forward slash donate. Thank you so much and see you next time.